Hello travelers. Today, we're going to be talking about power consumption in a mining rig, how to ensure you have accurate numbers, tips and tricks you could use to hopefully improve your efficiency and profitability. A few things to note, primarily, this software reported power is not accurate and should not be relied on. I see a lot of people using that number, plugging into their calculators like what to mine and assuming that's their electrical cost. Not really the best approach, a few reasons for that. AMD GPUs are well known for under-reporting power. So they'll actually say a number in software that's less than what they actually consume. You don't know how much it is unless you measure it. Some NVIDIA GPUs do it as well, it depends on the model. And that number doesn't take into account auxiliary cooling if you have external fans. Maybe you have splitters or something like that. Risers, which consume a tiny bit of power. The CPU, the memory, the motherboard, the boot drive, these things aren't factored in with that. The power supply inefficiencies. External box fans for cooling, room cooling, air conditioning. Of course, none of these things are factored in that number. So if you want to calculate your true profitability and electrical costs, you do need to understand and preferably measure your power draw. So how do you do that? My preferred approach is using an Elmore Labs PMD. It's this little guy here. So this will intercept your PCIe power. And this being an A2000 rig, it's just powered by the one PCIe. And it'll give you a pretty accurate number for the actual real-time power draw. You can see it fluctuating around. This rig has 12 A2000s powered by dual 750 watt HP power supplies rated at 96% efficiency. And I got a power meter here. I'll link this stuff in the video description. This is showing me my AC power draw. Now the AC power draw is what you pay for. This is what comes out of the wall. That load here is my actual system power draw that I'm paying for. This is the DC power draw for one card. It doesn't take into account the other factors we talked about. So this is what you want to know, but you could use something like this to help you tune your GPUs. Fan speeds, clock speeds, and stuff like that. We'll talk more about that in a future video. I'll do a deep dive on it. But for now, this is more a high-level overview. And if you have things like box fans or auxiliary fans, it's a good idea to be able to measure the power on them so you know how much benefit you're getting in terms of airflow from the consumption. I would try low, medium, high if you have three speeds. See, can you get away with low? Can you get away with medium? Maybe one fan on high serves the purpose of two on low, and maybe that takes less power. Maybe that's more efficient. Maybe you could align your rigs in a way so that one box fan could do the work of two, and you could replace a box fan, or things of that nature. It's food for thought, things to consider and think about, but the measurements are very helpful in that to understand what's happening here. And this number here, the total system power draw, that will fluctuate with temperature. So right now it's fairly warm outside, and you can see my intake temperature coming from outside of the building is around 84 degrees Fahrenheit. When the temperature drops, this total power draw will actually go down as well, fairly considerably. It could be 50 watts or even 100 watts in extreme cases. So it's a balancing act. You want as much airflow as you can get to cool your building off so your equipment runs cool and saves you power, but that airflow costs you money. The fans take more power when they run higher speed, when they push more air. If you have more fans, of course that takes more power. So it's a balancing act between determining how much power the stuff consumes and how much power you save. And now the power supplies are typically more efficient when run at 240 volts. So if you're in North America, you very likely have 240 volts present in what's called split phase service. So there's two phases effectively and 120 volt circuit is powered off one leg and it goes to neutral. The 240 volt circuit powered off both legs and doesn't use the neutral. It's basically a 240 volt service with a neutral center tap conductor. So technically all North America is actually 240 volts, but people call it 120 because that's what's present at your outlets. So if you have the option, consult with an electrician if available, understand your local codes and laws, and try to run 240 volt dedicated circuit to your equipment, it'll probably save you about 2%. Usually you could figure this out by trying to find a uh, efficiency curve online 
if you can't do that, or you don't trust it, or it doesn't have enough resolution like they commonly do, you can actually make your own efficiency curve for your power supplies to determine the best loading, the best percentage of load to put on your power supplies. Typically, power supplies are most efficient around 50% load, but this is going to depend on the power supply. So here's data that I calculated with my common power supplies, the HSTNS PD29, HSTNS PL34. And you can see the data here. This one peaks at around 60% or so, plus or minus. You can see it goes up and it comes back down a little bit. This one has a flatter curve. It stays higher or longer. This one matters less, the loading. As long as you're above, say, 35% or so, it's efficient all the way up to 90, 95. And if you look at this same power supply on 120 volts, you can see the line's lower and has a slightly different curve. Now, these numbers don't assume that they're the absolute truth. These are probably a little lower than they're supposed to be, but the curve gives you a good approximation. And you can actually generate data like this yourself fairly easily. All you need is hopefully a rig of the same GPUs. It tends to be the most accurate that way. You run your rig with one GPU, record the reported power consumption, record the AC power consumption at the wall, and you keep adding GPUs to increase the load on the power supply, and you graph this. You should have a decent shape for the curve that kind of shows you the efficiency. You expect it to go up fast, kind of stay flat for a while, and then come down as that load increases. Most power supplies are most efficient, around 50%. Some power supplies, especially very high power ATX, are most efficient actually around 35. Some are efficient around 65 or 70. So you really gotta know your power supply to know how you should load it. But if you have an understanding like that, you could use that information to determine how much load to place on your power supplies. How many do I need? How many amps to put on each one? And you load your power supplies most efficiently. What that'll do is gives you the most amount of DC out that powers your cards for the least amount of AC in. This isn't a huge difference. It's somewhat minor, but in a lot of cases, it's pretty inexpensive to do. Depends on your setup. So if you could balance them better, maybe that'll save you some power there. That's a good approach. And I'll talk more about sourcing server power supplies in the future. On top of that, you have fans on your cards. A lot of miners will support active fan control, so you could actually set the miner to control the fan speed based on temperatures. So what you could do is you could use your Elmore Labs PMD to measure card power consumption, and you could tune the fan speed to the minimum amount to get away with the right amount of cooling to maximize hash rate for the minimum power consumption. And you could have it automatically ramp the fan speed up as temperatures increase. So if you have an air-cooled room and temperatures go up and down over the course of the day, you could have the fan speeds dynamically change to always save as much power as practical and minimize fan wear while also still producing good temperatures and all that. On top of that, especially if you have a higher power CPU with strong boost states, you could lock your CPU out of the higher power states. So I have CPU Z here reporting my core frequency. This is a 2.8 gigahertz CPU. You can see it's running at 1.6 right now, which is its minimum state. There's the core voltage ID. And what that will do is it'll ensure the card, the CPU won't move around in clock speed and waste power unnecessarily. And how you could get it to do that is you go into your settings if you're using Windows. You go into system, power and sleep, advanced power settings, change plan settings, advanced power settings. This window comes up, processor power management, maximum processor state. And if you set that number to 99, it will disable the turbo boost, which a lot of newer gen CPUs have. And that tends to be fairly inefficient and you'll still get more or less near full performance or most of the performance. Now, if you're CPU mining, you probably don't want to do this. You want to consider other options. But if you're just GPU mining and the thing's just sitting idle, you could even set it to a really low number, like one or five, and that'll pretty much force it to go to its minimum power state all the time. And you can use a tool like CPU-Z to verify this. It'll show you the clock speed. And you'll see normally this clock speed will fluctuate up and down unnecessarily, and there's really no reason for it when you're GPU mining because there's so little load on the CPU. 
but some of the boost behaviors on the CPU can be a little too aggressive and it'll waste a little bit extra power. So that's one way to save a few watts. Not a ton, but it's very easy to do. And it'll ensure your CPU is always at the minimum power state. These cards, I have external fans on and I have a affordable PWM controller on it that has a temperature probe. This temperature probe will measure the temperature and these fans will automatically increase their temperature as it increase their speed as the temperatures increase. It's another way to save power if you have auxiliary fans like here. You could have a temperature probe on one of those temperature controllers and you could have the auxiliary fans automatically adjust their speed as needed to meet demand. Some of these fans take a lot of power. It could be as much as 10, 15, 20 watts for a single server fan that's high speed, high power. Sometimes you need that and the power is justifiable, but understanding how much power it takes by measuring it, that's a good start. And then if you use something like this to be able to control the speeds automatically, what you can do is hopefully optimize the power consumption, save as much as you can, minimize fan wear and all that. So hopefully I give you a few tools you could use to arm yourself with the knowledge to try and save a little bit of power. Uh, there's not a ton you could do, but certainly a few percent here and there. And well, a few percent matters in GPU mining since power tends to be your number one cost, of course, aside from hardware. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I read all your comments. I'll try to answer them or maybe make a future video if the need justifies it. And um, until next time, stay hashing.